let's talk about 2D animations in Godot. In this quick tutorial, I will show you how to create an animation from sprite frames and how to play the animations in code. My name is Mac, let's do this. For this tutorial, you will need the following setup. A functioning player that can move around, that contains a sprite node, a walk animation and an idle animation. Instead of the normal sprite node, we will use the animated sprite node. So let's replace the normal sprite node by deleting it and then add the new animated sprite node to our player. In the inspector, unfold animation, click on the empty next to the sprite frames and then select new sprite frames. Then open up the sprite frames editor by clicking on the newly created sprite frames. To make an animation, you need to add frames. There are two ways of adding frames. The first method is to click this button, look for your animation files and then add separate images as frames. Use Ctrl plus click to select multiple frames. The second method requires a sprite sheet. Open a sprite sheet by clicking this button and then look for your sprite sheet. In a new editor window, you can slice the sheet into multiple frames. Tip: The easiest way to slice your sheet up is by knowing the dimensions of your frames. My dimensions are 100 by 64. Finally, select the frames and then add them to the animation. If you're using a pixel animation that appears blurry, navigate to the inspector, unfold texture and set the filter to nearest. Give the animation a proper name. I call this one walk. Click the auto play on load button if you want the player to start with this animation. I usually want my animation to start with an idle one, so for walking I leave it unselected. Then check if the animation should be looping. For example, a walk animation should loop, but a jump animation should not. If you want to change the speed of the animation, adjust the frames per second it should play. This is useful if you're lazy like me and use the same animation for running as for walking but just with a higher frame rate. When you're done with the animation and want to create a new one, simply press the add animation button on the left. For demonstration later in the video, I also added an idle animation. Next, we will create a tiny script to play the animation we just created. If you haven't already, add a new script to your player. I will use the character body template script for demonstration. In less than two minutes, I briefly explained the template script in a previous video on character movement. So I won't explain it here, but the link plus timestamp can be found in the description if you feel like you need the explanation. Start with making a variable with a reference to our animated sprite. Type at onready var animated underscore sprite equals dollar sign animated sprite 2D. This automatically attaches our animated sprite to our script. To play our animation, you need to call the play function on our animation variable and assign what animation it should play. I want the walk animation to start playing when we move to the left and to the right, so over here I type animated sprite dot play walk. If we load up our scene and move around, the walk animation is playing, but as you can see it only plays the animation to the right. The animation should be flipped when we move to the left. In this template script, moving left and right depends on the value of direction. Direction is equal to 1 when moving to the right and equal to negative 1 when moving to the left. You can use this to flip your character when direction is smaller than 0. Add a new line and type animated underscore sprite dot flip underscore h and set it equal to direction is smaller than 0. Now watch how the player flips when we change directions. Lastly, we want the idle animation to start playing when we don't move. Add one more line in this else section that executes when we don't move and type animated underscore sprite dot play idle. Now watch how the idle animation starts playing when we don't give any input. And that's it. If you want to learn how to make the 2D platformer controller that was used in this tutorial, you should check out this video over here.